The master ka is a push type of lacrimal intubation stent. It consists of a fixation device in the shape of a punctal plug connected to a length of silicon tubing with a metallic guide that assists insertion by pushing the tubing into the canaliculus and nasolacrimal duct. The punctal plug is similar to that of classical Monica stents. The silicon tube measures 0.96 millimeters in outer diameter. The metallic guide is placed inside the lumen of the tubing rather than attached at the end of the silicon tubing as in classical types of silastic stents that must be pulled from the nose. The master ka is available in three lengths, 30, 35, and 40 millimeters. Schematically, the principle of master ka is comparable to that of venous catheters. The fixation plug is stabilized at the punctal opening by applying pressure with a blunt probe or the dilator insertion instrument to prevent the silicon tube from dislodging as the guide is withdrawn. It is actually possible to remove the guide completely and to reinsert it without altering the stability and shape of the master ka tubing. Placement of the master ka requires two steps. An initial probing of the patient done in the operating room under general anesthesia in order to determine the severity of nasolacrimal obstruction. If this is a simple mucosal type of obstruction, then a master ka intubation is done using a pushed method of insertion with the metallic guide. The preliminary lacrimal exploration with probing is essential. It allows the surgeon to identify the location and severity of obstruction in order to avoid potential false passages and to choose the appropriate master ka length. Tactile sensations felt during the exploratory probing permit the surgeon to distinguish between simple nasolacrimal duct stenosis and more complex obstructions, thereby allowing the surgeon to assess whether the master ka stent system is appropriate for the specific patient. A larger lacrimal probe with a blunt tip is advanced very carefully beneath the inferior turbinate, searching for metal-to-metal -metal contact in order to confirm proper location of the master ka stent. The distance between the punctum and the nasolacrimal stenosis is measured as well as the distance between the punctum and the nasal fossa floor. The length of the master ka should be about 5 millimeters longer than the distance between the punctum and the site of the nasolacrimal obstruction. The stent should not be longer than the distance between the punctum and the nasal fossa floor. Observe the marking on the guide, which will permit the surgeon to determine the proper length of the master ka. One must always select a sufficient length so that the master ka is long enough to pass through the end of the duct. Nasolacrimal duct intubation using the master ka is technically comparable to a lacrimal stenting done at any age and requires the usual medical and anesthetic precautions. Careful dilation of the punctum and advancement to the bony contact is felt as a hard stop in the lacrimal sac. During the vertical stenting, one should try to continue advancing the master ka until the fixation plug reaches the punctal opening. Removal of the metallic guide. The fixation plug must be held firmly in contact with the punctum throughout the entire process of withdrawing the metallic guide. Removal of the guide is done slowly and carefully with multiple back and forth rotations while remaining in the vertical axis of the lacrimal duct, much like winding a watch. The use of a dilator and punctal plug inserter is essential for proper seating of the fixation plug in the punctum. After inserting the plug into the punctal antrum, the collarette must sit flush on the lid margin. A flat appearance of the collarette indicates that the master ka is securely in place. A successful pushed intubation with the master ka can be further validated through an endoscopic view. Here we see a master ka intubation during a DCR procedure, which indicates that the silicon tubing does not retract while removing the metallic guide. 
with nasolacrimal duct intubation, an endoscopic view of the inferior turbinate can also demonstrate the same finding. The master cot tubing stays in place while the guide is removed. The principal indication for the master cot pushed intubation technique is for the treatment of simple mucosal obstructions in the nasolacrimal duct, most commonly at the valve of Hasner. It may also be considered, however, for repair of canalicular trauma, canalicular agenesis, or DCR procedures in certain instances. The master ca is an excellent alternative for stenting simple congenital nasolacrimal obstructions at any age, whether early or very late. Routine general anesthesia techniques are sufficient. The operating time is similar. The master ca avoids the unnecessary and often difficult intranasal maneuvers needed to pull out the stent and tubing of traditional pulled intubation systems. The cost of the master ca is balanced by a much better success rate and therefore fewer repeat procedures. Postoperative care is limited to topical antibiotic ointment for approximately one week. The duration of intubation varies according to the surgical indication and nature of the obstruction. For congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction, leaving the master con in place for three weeks is sufficient in most cases, particularly if clearance of fluorescein dye can be documented. The stent is removed as an office procedure with a forceps instrument by pulling on the collarette. This removal is painless and does not require a general anesthetic. Optimum results and the prevention of complications depend directly on two elements, expert technique and appropriate selection of the stent length. If metal-to-metal -metal contact is not achieved in the nasal fossa, it is possible that a false passage may have been created. To avoid failure, one should restart the procedure from the beginning. If metal-to-metal -metal contact is still not achieved, it is better to change the method of intubation altogether or to postpone the procedure for a later date. It is also possible that the stent model selected may be too short if the fixation plug of the master ca is already in the punctum while the stent has not yet reached the site of mucosal stenosis. To avoid failure, a longer stent model should then be utilized. The stent model is too long if its distal end appears at the nasal fossa floor while the fixation head has not yet reached the punctum. The risk of premature expulsion will also increase if the placement of the stent was done by compressing the stent on itself in the duct, causing an effect similar to an accordion or compressed spring. If the fixation plug is no longer in contact with the punctum, because the stent has come out as the metallic guide is withdrawn, it is necessary to stop and readjust the stent on the guide. The fixation plug is moved up near the guide handle, inserted to the proper position, and then the guide carefully withdrawn. In summary, Careful preliminary lacrimal probing in the operating room is paramount for proper use of the master ca. It distinguishes by tactile sense the more common types of mucosal nasolacrimal stenosis from the less frequently seen cases with complex stenosis. By requiring metal-to-metal -metal contact in the nasal fossa, it avoids false passages, which always result in failure. It facilitates the correct choice of stent length, which should extend 5 mm beyond the site of nasolacrimal obstruction without exceeding the distance between the punctum and the nasal fossa floor. When the master ca is appropriately selected and inserted properly, the complications are minimal and the success rate very high.